a little bit of steam coming out. And we'll pour that. Today we're going to be making Green Dragon, a tincture. Um, you're going to need grain alcohol. All right, Everclear is the uh, the most popular uh, example of this. Um, but I, when I went to my local liquor store, um, they didn't have Everclear. They were actually sold out. So I just got the store brand. Um, this is store brand grain alcohol. It's actually 153 proof. Um, the higher the proof, the better as far as tinctures go. Um, but uh, it has to be grain alcohol and high proof. Next thing you're going to need is uh, some flour. 21 grams. Nice little sativa there. Let's see if we can come in on that. So you're also going to need mason jars. Okay, you can pick these up anywhere, your local grocery store, Amazon. Next thing you're gonna need is that crock pot that you see right back there in, uh, in front of you. Um, this by far is my favorite crock pot, and probably my favorite device um, for working with edibles, tinctures. Specifically, this crock pot um, gets to really low temperatures. Um, I, I think it's as low as 100 degrees on this. Um, I usually go, when I'm making my tinctures, about as low as uh, 120 or 130, just depending on, uh, and that's Fahrenheit, um, just depending on what um, ingredients um, we're using. It actually comes with a built-in temperature probe, uh, and that's really gonna come in handy um, because we need to keep an eye on those um, slow and low temperatures that we need uh, when working with cannabinoids. Okay, uh, you're also going to need a, a Pyrex dish, um, oven safe. They come in many different varieties. Here's one, we'll probably use this one. Uh, here's another one, um, again, just any variety. Uh, uh, we're also going to need some tin foil. All right, some, just some basic tin foil there. We're going to need an oven thermometer. All right, um, yes, the crock pot comes with its own temperature probe, but we also need a probe for the, uh, the oven. And um, this is also going to act as a double check uh, in the slow cooker. You're also going to need a strainer. Yeah, you can get any different kinds of strainers. Um, this I got at the dollar store. Just a super simple strainer. Um, conveniently, I actually found these at the dollar store too. Um, these are strainers that are just um, meant to go in the sink and just stop things from going on the sink drain. Uh, but I think these are gonna fit really well on my mason jars. So that's cool, we got those strainers. Uh, we're also going to need some uh, cheesecloth, okay. Um, just basic cheesecloth. You can get this anywhere. Okay. After the cheesecloth, we're going to need some funnels. Just get yourself a set of multiple sizes. And then the last thing we're going to need is some tincture bottles. All right. Um, you can get these. I got these online, uh, Amazon. Uh, these are the two ounce bottles. And then, of course, um, the tincture bottles come with their own droppers. So. Make sure you take care of those and don't lose them. All right, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started now. Um, first thing we need to do is uh, go ahead and preheat our oven. Uh, we also need to, uh, to break up the bud. So we'll get started on that and we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Um, originally, I was gonna go with that, um, that higher walled uh, Pyrex, but I went with the shallow one. Um, the reason we break up the bud and spread it out is because we wanna um, have as much surface area showing as possible. Um, if I had used um, the other dish, um, the bud basically uh, would have been thicker um, and less surface area uh, would be showing. And then also, I uh, should have mentioned that um, the reason we use the, uh, the oven thermometer there is because ovens are um, notorious for fluctuating and ranging a lot um, in temperature. Um, just because the, um, the oven says one thing on the, uh, on the dial doesn't necessarily mean that's what's going on inside. Um, our target temperature uh, for decarboxylating is going to be 240 degrees. So um, you can see I've got a little alarm set up on my, uh, my oven thermometer there and uh, we're at 122 just uh, creeping up to 240. So once we're at a steady 240, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, resume. 
All right, so here's an example of what I'm talking about. Um, so I've got the oven set at 240 degrees. Um, according to my oven thermometer, I'm well over 240. Um, so we're just going to cool this down, and I have an alarm set to go off at, if it reaches 253. Um, so we'll just uh, to cool it down, all I'll do is just open the door a little bit, let some of that hot air out. Um, and then once we stabilize, once we get to 240, um, that's when I'll go ahead and put the, uh, the butt in there. Um, to be honest with you, 250 isn't going to do too much damage. Um, I just like to have a little more control over the temperature before I start decarboxylating. So you can see the, uh, the temperature already started to go back down now that the door is open. Okay, so we hit our 240. I pulled the um, thermometer out. That's why we have such a low reading right now. Uh, but the thermometer is out. Just wanted to show you the, um, the broken up bud. It does need to be powdered fine, um, but it does need to be nice and ground. Um, you know, bigger chunks like that are okay. Uh, but it does need to be just a lot of surface area showing um, and evenly distributed. We want a nice, even decarboxylation. All right, so the next step is uh, we're going to grab our tin foil. We're going to place our thermometer inside of our Pyrex. Cover it up with the, uh, the tin foil. All right, back up a little bit. Up and we go. Again, 240 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're gonna decarb for 40 minutes. Oh yeah, and just a reminder again, this is the part, the decarbing part um, of the process that um, produces an odor. Um, I love it, but uh, if you can't have a strong odor, there are better ways to do this, I guess. Okay, so we are getting there. Uh, we're about uh, nine minutes left of the decar process. Temperature climbed up a little bit, up to 248, so I've got the oven open. We're just going to let that stabilize a little bit. Um, now is also a good time to uh, start preheating my favorite device. I, 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 won't, I can't state this enough. This is my favorite device when it comes to uh, making edibles, tinctures, and um, just extracting in general. A lot of temperature control on this thing. Um, but we'll go ahead and set this up. Um, since this is alcohol, we're going to um, do at a very low heat, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we're also going to set the time for uh, four hours. It's about how long I want this to go for. Um, and the reason we go so low, this is a very important safety uh, reminder. The reason we go so low is because alcohol fumes are flammable. Um, we do not want to get to a point where we're boiling and steaming this alcohol. Um, so we just want a nice controlled 130 degrees. It's safe to do indoors. And um, we can see the temperature is going back down on the, uh, on the thermostat in the oven. Getting back down to 246. All right, um, only thing left to do, we set the uh, temperature to 130, set the time for four hours. We'll go ahead and hit start. And that four hours is not going to start counting uh, until it actually hits the target temperature. Um, so we're good on the time uh, for now, and I can always reset it if I need to. Um, I'll also get the lid set up. Just hide it upside down. Uh, I'll get my temperature probe in there. Such a cool feature, man. Such a cool feature. And the temperature probe will tell me when we hit that, uh, that target temp, 130 degrees. Still got this going in the oven. We'll close this back up. Now that the temperature is getting more stable. And we are almost there. It is time. Timer went off. That's just the time of day right now. Um, we got the slow cooker still preheating. We finished the decarb at 248, so we kept the temperature under control. That's good news. Um, back up a little bit. Use a towel or an oven mitt or something like that. just gonna let that sit there for, uh, for a minute or two because it's obviously gonna be really hot to handle right now. Um, give you guys a peek of what it looks like. So a lot more brown now. It used to be a little more green. Um, it's just brown now. Uh, but this bud is now activated. It's ready to be used in tinctures. It is worth noting that my 20.9 grams uh, turned out to be 18.7 after decarbing. And that's just something um, you have to keep in mind if you're going to be splitting it up like me to, uh, to be able to still split it up evenly. 
Okay, we are about preheated, um, 127 there. Uh, that beep just says we, we just hit 130. Um, I've got um, my three jars filled up right now. My labels behind them. And we'll go ahead and uh, start filling them up accordingly. My double check is telling me 131 right here. Crockpot was telling me 130 just a second ago. I am good with those readings. Um, and I also have, like I said, I have the double check back there and I have the built-in probe in the front. Such a cool feature. That's why this thing started counting down already. So we should hurry up and get started. Uh, but what we're going to do with the, uh, the grain alcohol so we're gonna fill up the jars um, just so that we cover up the bud. Uh, we're not gonna do an excess amount of this stuff. Uh, we're just gonna cover up the bud. Oh, that's the uh, the alarm I set on the uh, on the double check. So uh, if it hits uh, 140, it's gonna notify me. So. I uh, just hit 140. Um, I'm not too worried though. Again, this will uh, calibrate and regulate itself. We're just gonna put a little more alcohol in there. So we're just gonna just enough to cover up now the uh, the bud. Just checking the measurements. Yeah, we look good. Okay, this will be the one for the heat. Not a good shake. Put that in with the heat. And we are good. So uh, we're about 30 minutes in right now. Um, Something I forgot to mention is we do want to uh, shake these up and uh, just kind of agitate them a little bit uh, every once in a while. Safety first, we'll get a, uh, a towel. I don't have to grab anything too hot. Give that a shake. Another check in, uh, about uh, 45 minutes in. Um, switch over to the temp. It's telling me 133 on the crock pot. It's telling me 133 on my double check. Man, I love this thing. We should name it. If you guys have uh, name suggestions, put them in the comments. And uh, also, I'll take the time to uh, mention, um, I went ahead and labeled my, my tincture bottles. When you're getting your tincture bottles, you want the amber colored ones. Amber is by far the best in protecting the quality of your tincture. Um, light and especially UV are gonna impact it. Okay, so 128 on the crock pot, 127 on the double check, we're good. Uh, I'm just gonna keep on keeping an eye on this and swirling it every 20 to 30 minutes. It should average out to 130. Okay, we're back. Um, so another super cool feature about this crock pot is it turns off automatically when the timer um, reaches the end and then it actually starts counting up. So you know how long it's been in there even after the timer went off. So we're about two minutes uh, after the timer went off now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull out these temperature probes so it's easier to work with the lid. Um, we maintained a very stable and constant temperature in there. Here's my 135 actually on my double check. Pull that out too. Another cool feature about this thing, it holds the lid. <laughs> you don't even have to hold the lid. All right, so um, after shaking it up a few times, I learned it's not really that hot. Um, I still advise you to use caution, but I'm comfortable um, without using towel or oven gloves at this time. And uh, what I have set up here is another mason jar with some cheesecloth. Um, basically, when you get the cheesecloth, um, it comes in a wrapped up bundle like this. Um, if you actually unbundle it, it's just really fine mesh, I guess is a, a word for it. And then what I've done is um, I've basically uh, folded it in half, so doubled it, and then folded it in half again, so quadrupled it. That's what you see here, it's like quadrupled over, and then I have it in that strainer that I showed you earlier. So we'll do the, um, this is the warm one, the hot one. Put 
Get that open. A little bit of steam coming out. And we'll pour that in to our strainer. All right, we'll let that uh, sit and do its thing. And um, actually what I'll also do is just pour a little bit of alcohol into here just to rinse it out and, and get everything all out into the cloth. I did um, the additional alcohol rinse, um, but I'm just gonna use uh, an additional tool here just to get everything out. Wouldn't want to waste anything. Um, the way this stuff is concentrated in such little amounts of fluid, um, just any amount, even a small amount wasted, is going to be a lot of migs of uh, THC. And we'll go over all the math, the dosing and stuff in a little bit. Get that all out. See, that's better. So we'll let that sit for a little bit. We'll squeeze it out, and then again, we'll do it for the next two. And we're back, all strained. Um, I forgot to mention, uh, when you're done straining, this is um, what the contents look like, all the bud and everything. Um, when you're done letting it sit and it's straining, uh, give it a good squeeze. Squeeze out all that extra fluid that's in there. I did that already, there's nothing else in here. Uh, but I just wanted to save that and uh, make that point. This is what the finished material looks like. This is the finished product. All right, so here's the one that we did with heat. Pretty dark color there. So uh, it's about a two ounce yield. And um, so we're just gonna go ahead and bottle these now. Um, this is one of the uh, the funnels I got at the dollar store. I packed up three for a dollar. So we'll just get that poured in. Try to do it so you guys can see and then at the same time I don't spill I have to keep an eye and make sure I don't overfill the bottle All right, yep, so just about two ounces because these are two ounce tincture bottles All right We'll do that two more times and we'll come right back. Okay, so here we are all bottled up. Onto the uh, dosing real quick. Uh, assuming uh, it's $200 an ounce, uh, we use 21 grams. And then also assuming 20% uh, THC content. And then also taking into consideration um, that I have about six fluid ounces here. I'm not counting um, this little extra, it's not even a full fluid ounce, so we'll just get that out of the way. But assuming I got six fluid ounces out of this, we're talking about uh, 4,200 total mix of THC um, across the whole entire batch. 700 mix of THC per fluid ounce, so each one of these is going to have about 1,400. Um, and then that's about 23.7 mix per ml for all my metric folks. Uh, dollars wise, it was $150 used. Again, uh, three quarters of an ounce at $200 an ounce. Um, that comes down to about $33 per fluid ounce, so about $66 per um, two ounce vial that you see there. And uh, it's about a $5.56 cost uh, per tablespoon, or excuse me, per teaspoon. And uh, we actually have a dosing and cost uh, calculator. Uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, for this video. Uh, so if you'll be making edibles, tinctures, whatever at home, you can just plug in your details. And you can find out exactly how to dose um, your stuff. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll probably be back with one more update. And we're back. Um, so basically, I'm already starting a next tincture batch. Um, I've got my bud decarbing in the oven. I've got my slow cooker preheating. And uh, the summary was um, the brown one, the one that came out of the freezer, was the best tasting one. Um, so that's the one I wound up uh, finishing. I'm not too much into alcohol um, in general, so I wound up taking the other two, um, the hot and the room temp prepared ones, and I turned them into can of sugar. So if you want to know how to make can of sugar, go ahead and check the video description for a link to that video. And we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. And if you've made it all the way to this point in the video, please hit that like and subscribe button. It would be super helpful and appreciated. Thank you.